Hey YouTube, Nomad76, uh, back with part two of my um, portable solar generator project here, or semi-portable, however, you, whatever you consider portable. Obviously, it's not gonna, you're not gonna throw this, the system in a backpack, but it could be, you know, loaded in a case and put in the back of your vehicle to take uh, camping or up to a um, hunting lodge or or hunting cabin, something like that. Um, kind of a base camp setup, not to, obviously not to backcountry setup. So uh, just a quick review. If you haven't seen part one, I'll throw in a link somewhere in here um, for uh, part one. Uh, they got the Renogy uh, 230 watt monocrystalline panels for uh, about 55, 60. On average, about 55 each. I paid a little bit more for one than the other. They have started, they've dropped even a little bit more now. I think I saw them for 53 free shipping, um, <clears throat> which is a pretty good deal uh, considering it's a mono crystalline, which is are the uh, considered the most expensive. Um, it uh, because the fact that mono crystalines are supposed to absorb up to 18% of the available sunlight. Uh, versus you have the second uh, type below that is a polycrystalline uh, which those type if uh, you see panels that look like they have like uh, different fragments in them because um, they, they're not made from one silicon panel they're made from uh, multiple smashed together silicon panels um, so the, you can kind of tell the difference when you look at those um, <clears throat> and then the last is the uh, uh, amorphous panels uh, which let me just okay so there if you see that that's a amorphous uh, panel that's a 5 watt panel if you look at that in comparison to um, the 30 watt monocrystalline panels it's uh, quite a bit size difference uh, at first I was like what that can't be right you know when I, when, when I got these panels because I've had this uh, five watt panel, this Sunforce five, five watt panel, for two and a half, three years now, and um, uh, but there, there, I guess there is some that's supposed to absorb the amorphous panels are supposed to absorb ten percent. I guess there is some benefits to those. Um, they um, suppose they work a little better in uh, low light, shading areas. Uh, I have heard, uh, watched a few videos that talk about their design for extremely intense light areas. So uh, that's something you gotta, I guess, just do some good research and that's kind of part of this project for me is doing a little bit of my own research um, because uh, there's a lot of information out there and uh, some of it doesn't all jive. So uh, let me get this out of the way and uh, we'll continue. Okay, so as you see here, I got some kind of I got it propped up with some of the little kickstands that I've made out of some little uh, aluminum angle, and um, I also purchased a EverStart uh, battery from Walmart. It's a hundred and one amp hour. It's a deep cycle, you know, marine type battery. Uh, it's uh, cost, you know, I think they're around eighty. But what you got to always remember is if you don't have that, uh, you don't have a battery to exchange. Um, you're gonna pay that core charge. So I think total by the time I walked out of there it was like eighty nine dollars, you know, including tax. Um, they still have, of course, the same solar control panel, uh, solar controller, which I paid ten dollars for, or ten dollars and ten cents. Um, the one of the other prize possessions here, and let me uh, pause you and I'll move you in on, is the. 1600 watt power inverter the Whistler uh, this particular model has been discontinued and on Amazon for a while they were selling them for about $112 in fact I think I got this $111 and some odd cents uh, and you know free shipping because I'm a prime member but um, for 1600 watts is going to cover all and if you remember on my last video trying to power my uh, or be able to power my uh, <clears throat> seven cubic feet deep freezer out here in the garage uh, in the case of a power outage 
well it draws around 900 we'll easily cover that and have a little additional maybe for charging up laptops or cell phones or whatnot anything that I might need to power uh, so you know because you always want a, a little bit of a buffer like on, on this box it said if you need uh, an estimate like say if you needed 650 watts you'd get an 800 watt inverter uh, of course with this uh, what is it the um, Intertech, it's been a while. Uh, watt meter thing here, you can use this tool for $15. And what did I say? Yeah, about 15 bucks. I think it was 14 something. But, um, and you could determine, add up what uh, what devices you want to power and determine what's. So for 1600 watts for $111, that was a smoking deal. I since checked right before doing this video, and Amazon does not, they're currently unavailable, which means you probably have to go with the newer model I don't really know what the difference is besides the fact that it looks different um, <clears throat> so and uh, I don't have a pricing for if I, I can look it up I'll throw it in there for you um, so all in all you know I've got some miscellaneous cables uh, that I've purchased this Y cable that I talked about in the previous video see um, to where it you know reduces it down to one and then the um, SE pigtail coming out of right there. I mean, even with the, you can see here, even with the garage lights on, and it's showing a charge indication. Um, so I like, like I said, I, that's one of my things I like about those connectors is, I, you know, the ease of being able to use this for multiple purposes. So, um, What's to come, I need to get to finish getting the wiring put together, some sort of mounting panel with a um, uh, voltmeter, uh, preferably. Now there is, if you see here, there's a voltmeter on here. Uh, in addition, three uh, 115 amp, or 115 volt, or 110 to 120 um, standard household outlets, a USB, and a option for a remote control. You plug it in through here, it looks almost like a little old phone jack. Um, I don't think that's an option I really need. Uh, so we'll keep testing this out. Uh, so future video will be probably all the wiring to connect this to the, because right now I just got it on clamps, which, um, sorry about that. You know, it works for a temporary setup. If I want to set up a more long term, I might want to change that around. And um, I'm not sure if I really like the kickstand setup I got on there right now. That's why I'm not really showing it. Uh, I might work through that a little bit. So stay tuned for part three of the solar generator project, portable solar, portable solar generator project. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and if you guys have any suggestions or whatever, uh, please uh, leave them below or hit me up in a PM. Oh, and also uh, the grand total so far, I've got about $376 into the system. But some of these items are, you know, have more than one use, so it's not that bad. Thanks for watching.